So I was told that they were trying to carve out just a few minutes for me to talk on diabetes. But I will say now, I know I mentioned earlier, I did about 10 years in labor and delivery. I've been a nurse for 30 plus years. I've worked basically everywhere you could work. Part of what I did um, after hospital and doctor's offices before I came to Blue Cross, I actually helped run a clinic for UAB and uh, that was my former life and it was basically like a big wellness clinic and we did biometric screenings we did education and i always thought up until that point i knew a lot about you know high blood pressure and weight and nutrition i knew a lot about a lot i felt like but i didn't know a lot about diabetes i actually thought that was one of the worst oh i just thought how boring is that diabetes who wants to sit around and talk to people about diabetes but then i found out pretty quickly people coming into the clinic what did they need the most help with diabetes and i thought oh my gosh these people are coming in i can't give them good information on it because i just don't know enough it just wasn't my as i would say it wasn't my forte it wasn't my bailiwick so i decided at that point to educate myself and just dig my heels in and figure out what i needed to know in order to educate the people that were coming into the clinic so that's what i did i ended up studying for months on end sat for a diabetes certification and i've been a diabetes educator for about 10 years now i'm pretty much just a nerd about it and i love it so um today i'm going to try to go through it really fast it's like a crash course and so there aren't going to be a lot of details we know that with diabetes clearly it's on the rise type 2 diabetes is on the rise pre-diabetes is on the rise uh, we know that everybody's concerned we see it in in this group we see it in all the groups within the walls of blue cross blue shield it is everywhere um, we know that there are contributing factors to it physical inactivity smoking is one actually um, weight carrying too much weight so there are contributing factors there are a lot of signs and symptoms that lead up to diabetes there are a lot of other risk factors that come with it but guess what we're not covering any of that today because we don't have time but you can listen to the podcast that i did that will be um i think on the website or may already be on the website you can go there and get a lot more details but today literally a crash course so who wants to guess what this is what i hear a pancreas that's right this is my pancreas okay so your pancreas kind of sits up under your liver so it's kind of hidden but this this is your pancreas okay on this pancreas are beta cells okay these little dots are beta cells i hope that this is my pancreas because it's got a lot of beta cells that means that i'm producing good insulin now everybody's eating lunch our blood sugar is all going up okay we're going to talk about what should be happening this side of this pancreas does not look so great okay this is what happens when those precursors to diabetes start occurring all right so this is your pancreas it's located kind of under your liver all right so again we're going to talk about the precursors kind of quickly um when you eat what should happen is when we had lunch we eat it starts to get absorbed your blood sugar starts to go up okay at that point your pancreas your beta cells secrete insulin okay insulin is the hormone that does a lot of wonderful things in the body okay it has a lot of different tasks without it we can't survive it is literally essential for growth and survival it's um gosh it just does so many different things i could tick through those but again that's kind of a different discussion for a different day or maybe listen to the podcast and you'll get more information it's a builder hormone um it's also a fat storage hormone so one of the things most people when they think of insulin they go oh yeah i think it's that hormone that helps get your blood sugar down that is that is correct we do need it for that but in that process it basically tells the body use the sugar that's in the bloodstream don't when i say it's a fat storage hormone don't go burn fat don't use the fat i need you to use what's in the bloodstream okay because again when we eat and drink and our bodies are absorbing that it gets into our bloodstream and it sits there and it's got to be used we want it to be used okay so here's an analogy that i love to share so i'm gonna put my my pretty pancreas up there um so this does anybody know what this is or give it a guess no no guesses on that was a little obvious this is a cell okay so this is a cell 
in your body. Clearly, we have lots of them. They all need energy. Okay. So typically, here here's a, an analogy I'm going to give before I show you this one. When I was at the clinic, I would give the patients that would come in or the clients, whatever you want to call them, when you eat and your blood sugar goes up and your pancreas secretes that insulin to get it back down, everybody's played Pac-Man before. Everybody knows what the game Pac-Man is, right? Or you've seen it or played it. So on the Pac-Man screen, you have Pac-Man. And what is the goal of Pac-Man? eat as many dots as possible. You're driving Pac-Man all over the place trying to get those dots up. Well, if you think about what that game is and apply it to what your body's trying to do, all of your cells need energy. So all of that fuel, energy, blood sugar, glucose, whatever you want to call it, it's floating around in your blood. Your cells need to uptake it so it can get the fuel that it needs, okay? So if my hand is a cell, in order for the cell to open, to go be Pac-Man, to get that sugar out of my bloodstream, it has to have a key to open the cell up. That key is insulin, okay? That's why insulin is so essential. It has to open that cell, it unlocks it and opens it so it can do its job. Otherwise, sugar just sits there or the energy, the fuel, whatever you wanna call it, and so does the insulin, okay? so. This is my, my other analogy. It's kind of the same thing. But this is the cell. It's closed down. It can't go get the energy that it needs, okay? This, the computer is singing to me. This is insulin, okay? So insulin, it drops in like a key. And then what happens? Your cell opens. And what happens? Energy gets to get in there. Okay, so I think that's just a nice little analogy to show you how that works. Um, if for some reason, clearly that does not happen because that would be what we would call, I say, homeostasis. You eat, it starts to get absorbed, your blood sugar goes, starts to go up, your insulin is excreted, your blood sugar comes down. That's what we call homeostasis. That's what we want to happen. But sometimes Pac-Man doesn't get fed. And again, that's when you go into that scenario of now you've got blood sugar, you've got a lot of sugar in the blood, and then you've got the insulin as well. So then that gets into those precursors, and that's what we call insulin resistance, okay? So your your cells are being resistant to the insulin. It might, maybe you don't have enough. Maybe you you're lost some beta cells. Maybe your cells aren't working as well. You just don't have enough of them. Maybe for an older person, they don't, their insulin production is not going to be as great. Maybe you have insulin production, but it's just not working correctly. Okay. So that's kind of that first, first stage would be insulin resistance. Again, very, very important to get your screenings, get your biometric screenings, go to the doctor, because the only way you're going to know if you're in one of those precursor stages is to have your numbers checked. Otherwise, people are kind of oblivious. OK, so again, super, super important to go to the doctor or get your biometrics. Hopefully you're doing both. OK, so once that scenario starts, now you've got all this insulin in your bloodstream. The person is insulin resistant blood sugars you know typically what happens is say somebody eats like french fries and a burger and a shake they just keep doing that over and over to their body okay for some people their pancreas if they're doing maybe other things right maybe they are exercising maybe their weight is where it should be they keep eating poor or they're eating too much from a calorie standpoint their pancreas will keep putting out the insulin and it keeps it's putting it out regardless of how high those blood sugars go it takes care of it okay for some people that's not going to be the case so it's kind of like my other analogy is an air conditioner your pancreas is very similar to an air conditioner so if you keep pressing it and making it work hard if you keep eating a cheeseburger uh, french fries and a coke or a shake whatever you keep doing every day and you keep doing that to your body and it keeps trying to produce that insulin eventually at some point it just wears out same thing with the air conditioner if you keep going into the room every day and you're hot and you take the thermostat and you snatch it down to 60 every day and you do that day in and day out initially the air conditioner is going to try to keep up. It's going to try to cool the room, cool the room, cool the room. Same thing with the pancreas. It's going to keep supplying the insulin. But at some point, it says, eh, I'm broken, okay? I'm out of Freon. I've frozen up. 
I'm not going to work today. So that's essentially what happens with your pancreas. So again, I think that's kind of another good way to think about things when you're thinking about what your pancreas is trying to do during the day. So please don't torment your, uh, your pancreas. We want it to work and we want it to work efficiently. Basically what happens when you get to that point though, your blood sugars start to elevate. So the next precursor to diabetes would be from the insulin resistant phase, then we go to prediabetes. So prediabetes is a little bit higher number. Um, we have you know different tests that we run, whether it's blood sugars or A1Cs. We have different ways of looking at certain values and they fall in certain categories as far as how we would classify someone. But that next phase would be a prediabetic phase. So that's when your blood sugars get a little bit higher. They're not high enough that we would deem or say somebody is a diabetic, but they're on the rise. Again, that health uh, coaching program that we have, the at-risk health coaching, that's a great place for a pre-diabetic to be because, again, that's the time frame to do something about it because you don't want to wait. I have a lot of people who are kind of straddling the fence and they're pre-diabetic and then guess what one day they wake up and they're diabetic what's a lot harder to go back reverse once you topple over on the other side of that fence okay so we want people to make those changes behavior changes when they're in that pre-diabetic phase before they get to the diabetic phase um, and really the only difference at that point once someone becomes a diabetic, it's it's all about numbers at that point. Is where, where are your numbers? Now your numbers have gotten even higher um, because your your body, your pancreas can't do what it needs to do. And maybe the person's not helping their body. Maybe they're continuing to eat poorly. Maybe they're not exercising. Maybe they're you know just do, not drinking enough water. There are a lot of different things that you can do to help your body um, lower your blood sugars, but a lot of people clearly don't do that. I would give you all those preventive tips, but I'm not only because I don't have time and I want you to listen to the podcast. It is about an hour long, but I do think it's worth it. I had a ball doing it. It was so fun. It's got tons and tons of details in there, way beyond what I told you today. Again, Physical inactivity, carrying too much weight, smoking, those are all precursors. We know now after years of research that the extra weight that we carry isn't just there. It's not just dormant. It is it is physically active. It secretes hormones and it's very toxic to our body. It manipulates our organs. So the extra weight that we carry isn't just kind of, it's not there any just, you know, sitting there like we thought in the past. So again, insulin resistance, prediabetes, and then diabetes. Those are kind of the stair steps um, to lots of risks. So there are a lot of a lot of other conditions that can trickle off of that. So again, get your biometrics done, get plugged into a program, tell other people to get their biometrics done, help them get plugged into a program. Um, and that's it. <laughs>